Do you want access to this podcast earlier than any other viewer? Consider becoming a channel member. All tiers get access to this podcast earlier than people who are not channel members, and it does help out this channel a lot. So if you do want to get all of the news updates, discussions, and market information for Flesh and Blood before anybody else, please make sure to become a channel member today. This podcast is also sponsored by Findall's Collection. Fiendall's Collection is a collection database website dedicated to showing you the market analytics of all things flesh and blood. Looking to track an entire master set? Fiendall's Collection has you covered. It's as easy as creating a collection in their collection tab and choosing which set you'd like to see in all of its glory. There's even an option to only add one of each equipment and cold foil, which really excites my set collecting heart. As a free user, you can upload your collection here to have a great look into what you have accomplished so far in Flesh and Blood. But if you wanted to track your collection in the secondary market, becoming a subscriber really ramps up that analytics portion of Fiendel's collection. For a measly $3 a month, you get to see the gain and loss each of your collections receive so you can accurately determine the worth of your cardboard as far as dollars are concerned. Subscribers also get access to the Market Trends and EV Tracking tabs, too. Market Trends is a great way for you to see what's hot in the flesh and blood market and may even give you some insight into what you should pick up for your own collection. The EV Tracker tool is another great example of the data that Fiendel's collection can provide. Tired of wondering if you're going to get hosed if you buy a booster box or even a case? Well, the EV Tracker is constantly updated to show what your estimated value is on each flesh and blood sealed product, which is a great thing for sealed collectors or even people who are just looking to get into the single selling business. Again, all of these tools and more are available to you for just $3 a month. But how about a free month's trial of the site before you settle in? By going to the subscription section and choosing a promo code, you can enter my affiliate code ASHTCG, all capitalized and all one word, and you will get a month of Findel's Collection subscription service for free. So if you've been looking for a new card collecting database for your master set collections, or even just some small little collections of your favorite pieces of flesh and blood, look no further than Findel's Collection. Don't forget to use the promo code ASHTCG when subscribing to receive a free month of service. Thank you so much to Fiendal's Collection for sponsoring this channel, and let's get back to the video. Welcome on in, my fabulous dragon folk, to this week's episode of The Common Language, your favorite flesh and blood podcast where we all talk about the things we like and just enjoying the game for what it is, right? Flesh and Blood has done a lot for us in our time, and whether you be a budget player or a highly competitive individual, uh, so many people have, have gotten great feedback from the podcast, and people like talking about the game and talking with me and hearing my, my stances on things. And so, uh, you know, I want to go ahead and just keep doing that for you. So this week, very interesting news that we got uh, just a couple days ago as of the recording of this video. It's currently the 19th of July. Uh, first and foremost, the good news for myself is that I got a new job as of today. So uh, I am going to be busy transitioning into that. So I do apologize if there is a delay in some of our content. I'm trying to have a lot of it set up, um, you know, streamlined so that way it's scheduled and ready to go for you guys. But uh, if I end up missing anything, don't worry about it, right? I'm just a, I'm a busy boy. But what I wanted to talk about today is the introduction of the Collector's Week for 2024. Now, Collector's Week is a week in which we kind of, uh, the, the people of Flesh and Blood, we like to talk about our collections and the all of these things that exist. Uh, we talk a lot about the high rare products that exist and the same rare products that exist then are the same ones that we're going to talk about now. Uh, it's just going to be slightly different now that new things like new Marvels and very rare serialized cards are out. So it's going to be something that's um, that's exciting to check out, I would say. I'm very, very excited to see. So a little phenomenon that has been happening over this past month has uh, kind of been it's it's been pretty quiet as far as things are concerned, which is kind of funny considering the uh, <laughs> the title of these videos that have been coming out. 
but there's a lot of videos that are called It's Time to Not Be Quiet About Flesh and Blood. And the purpose of these videos is to show off the fact that this game is collectible. There seem to be some individuals who believe that Flesh and Blood is not a collectible game, strictly because the game is so focused on the player base that the collectability of the game is just not there. Uh, but these videos, the It's Time to Not Be Quiet About Flesh and Blood videos, uh, for you visual learners, you get to see what it looks like here. You just look uh, type up on YouTube, It's Time to Not Be Quiet About Flesh and Blood. You can find a ton of videos. Uh, Pokey, Pokey Tin King? Yeah, Pokey Tin King made a playlist of all of these videos that people have been uploading and made their own playlist for people to look through so people can show off their collections and check this stuff out. Not every one of them are super in depth. Not every one of them contain insanely high value cards. As you can see here, um, you've got the you've got a lot of them here. This one is from um, Fabled Hunters, where they show off. I mean, Saint is known to have a lot of very, very uh, prominently uh, graded and rare cards in the flesh and blood market but you know that's what happens when you have money but the best part about this whole movement that's been happening is that it's not just about the big rarity stuff some people are just really excited to show off the cards that they enjoy the most and you know their own special things whether it just be a couple marvels or it be a cold foil or their very first gold foil they ever won at a tournament there is collectability there. I'll tell you, and I'll have to go get it, but I'm going to go ahead and show everybody what uh, what my own personal thing is. I'm not going to make a video for this, but for you guys who are watching, let me go get the card that I am talking about. So in this binder is my current works on a master set for Uprising. Uprising has been, it was the set that got me into flesh and blood, and it's the set that continues to pull me in I love everything about the Draconic Heroes that have come out. I can't wait to keep looking at more of the Draconic Heroes. But something that I have that is the most important card to me, it's not in a slab, it's not in any of it, I put it in this master set. It is this Marvel Necria. Marvel Necria, uh, one of the Draconic Illusionist dragons for uh, Dromai. This was the very first Marvel card out of my very first box of flesh and blood ever. My very first. I've kept it since and I will keep it forever because it is exactly what kept me coming back to flesh and blood. And that's kind of what Collector's Week is about. Collector's Week is about doing that. It's about talking about the things that we all enjoy in the game. And it's going to be very, very exciting to see because while it's about showing off your favorite things and telling these fun collector stories that everybody has, there's also a very important thing that happens. And we'll go over that in a sec here. So with Collector's Week happening, uh, it is going to be happening August 5th to August 10th. And every day there will be a new article that's released talking about these people and their experiences. For instance, we have interviews with key TCG collectors, handy collecting tips for beginners, juicy snapshots of high-end collections, the story of a man who opened two Alpha Heart of Fine Dolls and lost them both. They're even going to do a social media giveaway for some stuff, which I think is going to be very fun, especially for a collector's week. I'd be very curious to see what they give out. But more importantly, what they are going to be doing is what they did last year for the collector's week, which is a print run update. The print run update is something that a lot of collectors are looking into, and it's something that uh, it, it really drew me to flesh and blood when I found out that they are very transparent about their print runs. Uh, what Granted, it takes them about a year for them to release them, but uh, we will know more about the print runs of certain sets. Now, whether or not we're just going to be getting the unlimited Tales of Aria and unlimited Monarch uh, you know, numbers and nothing else, who knows, right? I think a lot of people are more curious about what the numbers are for 2.0 product. We want to know how much Uprising was printed, how much Dynasty was printed, how much Outsiders was printed, all that stuff, right? And I think the reason we want to look into that is because we want to make sure that our Marvels are not dirt cheap. And I think that just, it's really what it comes down to. 
Flesh and Blood 2.0 introduced a lot of stuff in regards to the, uh, the, the print run of the game being more print to demand. So instead of it being a, we're printing X amount of boxes at the start and then just shipping them out. Instead, now they are doing it more of a print to demand situation where you are going to, you know, as long as the, the community and the market wants these cards, they will print them until like a year goes by or something of the sort. And then they will stop printing cards for that set. I don't know if that year is exactly the cutoff because some sets that have been released within this past year have actually hit, been out of print already. Uh, currently, the only two sets that are in print for Flesh and Blood right now are Heavy Hitters and Part the Mist Veil. Everything else is out of print. So that includes Bright Lights, Dust Till Dawn. Dust Till Dawn was out of print the second it was released. So it's very, very interesting to see where these numbers are going to be, where we're going to see them, and, and what that's going to do to the cards themselves. Because a lot of these marvels are great collector pieces. And we'll go over some marvels when we go into our finals collection situation. Uh, but first, actually, I realize I've been recording for, uh, you know, a little while now, and uh, we haven't opened any packs. Um, I do have some packs that I want to go ahead and open up. Uh, since we are doing Collector's Week, you know, that's, I feel like it's also fitting. So we're going to open up a pack of heavy hitters. Speaking of being, being one of the sets that it's in print currently, um, we're going to open up some heavy hitters and I'm going to show off some stuff and we're going to go from there. So we've got a Pound Town Yellow. If I pull anything, if you guys are listening on audio, you guys will know because I will scream into this microphone uh, and I will peek. So Draw Swords Red, Thunk Blue, Pack Hunt Blue, a Wallop Red, Agile Wind Up, got a Wage Vigor, a Lead with Power Yellow, in Front Adversity, an Adrenaline Rush Blue, Ticket Puncher, not a Cold Foil, Clash of Vigor, a Stacked in Your Favor Red, Wage Agility Rainbow Foil, yeah, we Rainbow Foil, and then we've got our tokens. So that is our first pack out of three for us here at the podcast. So we got two more that are going to come, but something that uh, I'm very excited about, right, is that the, the Marvels that are coming out uh, with these sets are very, very sought after. A lot of people really think they're they're beautiful. They're arena pieces. And by arena pieces, I mean, it's things like equipment and uh, heroes and things like that stuff that is displayed almost at all times when the game starts so uh even then though you have cards that are in your deck that are also marvels uh we all remember the marvel dragons that were for dromai in classic instructed or in blitz how you know however you want to play her she's still available to play in blitz but those are all still very available and as a matter of fact they're very cheap even though blitz is no longer able to be played or even though classic instructed you can't play dromai anymore but now you can still play her in blitz so people who kept your dragons good on you right but some people want to go ahead and use those cards to help buy a new deck right get themselves set up in something new so they can play competitively so that's why a lot of them ended up selling but this is actually a great time to pick them up because if we find out that the print runs for Uprising are really low, it ends up being the, to the point where we like those could be really, really, really worth a lot of money. And I, I don't know, I feel they're never going to be printed that way ever again. So I feel like even if it is a highly printed set, it's still a fairly collectible thing. You know, I think a lot of people resonate with, you know, the, the fantasy realm of dragons and magic and monsters and stuff like that. And I feel like something like these these Marvel dragons is going to be something that is still going to be thought about for a long time. And that goes for the angels, too, that are out in Dust Till Dawn. I mean, that's absolutely gorgeous art. And currently Prism is doing very well in the meta. So you only expect to see that that's going to be the case for for most people. So that's the, the best part about Play, playing with the, the print run stuff. If, if the print run was not transparent and we didn't know anything about it, I certainly think it would have been it would have been a different kind of game for us as far as collectors. Because if we never knew and we only had slight information that maybe somebody heard from somebody at LSS and you know this, that, and the other, a lot of he said, she said stuff, 
uh, then we probably would be in a very, very weird market area where a lot of cards probably wouldn't sell or would sell for way higher than what they are supposed to. But with the transparency that LSS gives us, it is very, very nice. So before we move on to check out those those marvels and everything, because uh, I want to go over the marvels that are in the uh, in the game overall and go over the, the 2.0 stuff that you might want to start collecting before they start introducing print run numbers. But we're going to open up another pack. We're going to do that because we like heavy hitters and we want to try pulling ourselves a marble. This would be kind of a great thing to do. So got some stuff here. We've got a Thunk Red, Vigorous Engagement Red, Pound Town. We guess we can just kind of go through the commons here and chit chat for a bit, but very hopeful that we get at least a Majestic out of this one because I like me some Heavy Hitters Majestics. It's kind of Heavy Hitters really did a lot for me in regards to wanting to learn more about Warrior. So Warrior has been very fun for me. There's a Good Time Chapeau, a what is that? Over the Top Rainbow Foil and a wonderful couple of tokens. So there we go for that. That is our second of heavy hitters. Now we're gonna move on to our little uh, collector segment that we always have here. Collector segment of the Find Dolls collection. So if you guys did not see the, uh, the little ad at the beginning of this video, you can always go ahead and use the code AshTCG to sign up as a subscriber here. It'll get you a free month of service so you can utilize it and, you know, utilize any of these market trends or the EV trackers or track your whole collection. Um, and then if you continue to be subscribed, I get a kickback for that. And it's only three dollars a month. So pretty, pretty rad. But let's take a look at these dragons here. So dragons have not moved a whole lot since the last we have spoken. And that's pretty good. Right, about under $400 for all of these dragons. You only really need to get one if you're looking for just a master set version of the collection. But as we know, uh, there is a point in which Dromai will return and Dromai will return uh, utilizing these dragons later on. There might be new ones that enter the enter the fray, but these ones are going to be pretty important uh, for her game plan overall. And you're going to want them to look pretty, so you can probably just buy three of them. But Uvia, under $10. Benserikai is about $10. bucks. you have got the Mai, which is about $11. Necria is sitting about $12, $13. There's a whole lot of these. All these rares are really, really cheap, under $20 for any of these. But it's the marvels of the uh, Majestics that end up being really, really, really expensive. Right around $70, $85, $100 for these respectively but again you only really need to get one of the legendary ones here every one of these other ones you're going to want to get three so if that's your master set and that's something that you specifically want to just keep and collect for yourself uh, that is a great way to go ahead and start doing this but obviously you don't have to start here you can also go ahead and look at those marvel angels uh, the marvel angels are just an absolute treat to look at they are insanely beautiful art i mean you really can't get over i think between between themis and avalon and sekem i think these are probably my three then maybe like figment of protection uh probably figment of triumph and then war erudition and tenacity so very very cool art this one these guys are about 200 dollars more to collect than uh, the dragons, but you only need one of each of these. So it's technically you get less cards that cost more money. But if Prism ever hits Living Legend or Prism specifically Prism uh, Awakener of Soul ever hits Living Legend, these cards will go down. So if you're worrying about how much these are going to cost now, don't worry about it. You can always pick them up later. Um, unless we find out that the marvels of these cards are so incredibly short printed that uh you know they're gonna stay probably this price if not more for the foreseeable future at least from a collector perspective so you've got those let's see what other marvels can we look at here we've got oh let's even look at the transcend marvels let's look at the look at uh heavy hitters where's heavy hitters over here do 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 heavy hitters master sets 
uh, heavy hitters, cold foils, and marbles. Let's just look at that one instead. So let's take a look at those, and then we'll also look at the part the Misfail Master set to look at those. So these are just the Transcend Marvels, not including the Heroes, but all of these Transcend Marvels are about $564 for the whole set. Uh, again, these are also all Legendary, so you can only run one in your deck. So it helps you not have to buy multiple, but they are very, very, very expensive when it comes down to it with... Turns out, Rising Sun, Setting Moon, uh, and its market value being more expensive than any of these other cards. And it's strictly just because of probably its art. I'd imagine its art is really what does it. As far as market price goes, though, uh, Sacred Art, Undercurrent Desires is actually the most expensive from the market value. Um, and then Rising Sun, Setting Moon, and then the Sacred Arts. So I would say Rising Sun, Setting Moon, and Stir the Pot, probably the two most loved Transcend cards in the set. Uh, and they just have really wonderful art. Honestly, I love all of these and I want to collect them all, but uh, you know, haven't gotten around to doing that yet. So those are a great collection as well if you liked the more Japanese style arts like I do. Uh, and then also just the, the way the Chi looks on the other side of this is really pretty. Uh, but even the, uh, the Sacred Arts look really, really good too. Uh, keeping the look of the Part the Mist Veil stuff, the Marvels for the Heroes are still very expensive. If you're looking at the TCG player low pricing, New is at $230 for her Marvel. You've got Enigma, who's at 150 and Zen is at 100, right around 150 also. This is kind of wild to think that, I think New's just got that waifu tax on her, you know? She ends up being more expensive because she is loved by more players. But I know Zen has been kind of rocking the meta for a while, so I'm surprised his uh, his Marvel is this cheap. But overall, it's a pretty it's a pretty good amount for either of these. I think you expect these adult heroes to sit at above 100 for their Marvels as long as they're relevant in the meta. But when you even look at cards like the young the young uh, heroes in Marvel, they're significantly cheaper. You have Marvel Enigma for the young version of herself for $70. New as a Marvel is about $50. And then Zen is about $45, $45.50. And the fact that New and Zen are this like cheap for their Marvels is really, really, really good for Master Set collectors because you can just pick these up. This is just a regular Tuesday for everybody, right? $150 to $300 is a lot, but you know, 50 bucks every now and again will get you a pretty good card that you can put into your art, your, to your, your binder, right? So very, very happy to see that, that the part the misfail stuff is working pretty well. Um, and then let's even look at the heavy cold foils, right? Heavy cold foils. These are, again, it, it's down to meta preference. For instance, this adult version of Betsy is $76 where I personally would say this is a great pickup. If those of you who are looking to probably main a guardian, you can play Betsy. She's not super great compared to Bravo right now, but if Betsy ends up getting any kind of specific, like really, really great tech for her in the future, this card's gonna jump a lot because her hero power is very, very terrifying. So I'd be curious to see how that turns out. Olympia also not seeing a whole ton of play in the meta, but still over $100. KO still very popular in the meta, over $100. Victor, of course, being, uh, you know, the, the the gold boy himself is one of the more expensive Marvels, uh, sitting at 165. And then of course you do have the waifu tax of Kasai, who's sitting at $200. So those guys are all pretty expensive. Betsy's probably the cheapest I've ever seen in adult Marvel in my life. Uh, which is kind of crazy, but again, it's just because nobody nobody plays her, so she doesn't sell very well. And because if she doesn't sell very well and people want to move their product, they drop their prices and then they push it out. Um, so that's why people can get deals like this. So if you're looking for a Marvel that's really hard to pull, pull bet and buy Betsy. But if you look at the young versions, same deal. Young version of Kasai, $35. Young version of Olympia, 28. 24 for KO, 21 for Victor and a whopping $20 for Betsy. You can get all five of these young heroes in their Marvel forms for right around the same price as you can for one adult hero in 
Marvel or heavy hitters. So the Marvels are definitely going to be a good pick. I also think a lot of these expansion slot cards are going to be great pickups too. If you have not had an opportunity to look at any of the expansion slot cards, I do suggest doing so. Uh, for instance, Graven Call here being at $15 for a cold foil. Pretty good. Evo Magneto is a great um, mechanologist tech against mechanologist. So curious if that ends up working out in their favor later on. You do have all these other cold foil equipments and weapons and stuff like that. So there's opportunity for a lot of this to do very well. I'm even surprised Luminaris Angel's Glow is as cheap as it is in a cold foil at $30. So we'll see. But those are kind of opportunities that you guys can take. Again, if we find out more about a lot of these products that end up becoming uh, more short printed on the end of this print run update that we get on August 5th through the 10th, uh, it'll probably be the 9th or something that we end up getting the print run. But that is when you're going to actually see some pretty serious changes in the market. A print run, regardless of, of player popularity, uh, a print run change and, and the knowledge of how much of a set has been printed does change the value of nearly every card in the market. And I think a lot of people are going to be scrambling at the end of this to, to really pick up things that they've been wanting to pick up for a long time because a print run confirms how short printed something is. So if Uprising ends up being like only 100,000 boxes total, people are going to be picking up these Marvel dragons like nobody's business. They're going to be picking up every Marvel, every alternate art from Uprising. The same goes with Dynasty and with Outsiders and things like that. Like it's just it's just going to get really, really crazy on the market. Um, those numbers very well could go down. But we're not sure. So to end this uh, end this podcast off, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open our third pack of heavy hitters here. This is the last pack of heavy hitters I have. And I'm hoping for some goodies. So last time we pulled a cold foil and a majestic in our packs. So we're hoping to go ahead and do the same here. So wild ride blue, big bop red. Big bop is so underrated. I don't know if you guys know as the the common language you know, the fact that I love common so much is kind of crazy to me, but uh, I I think I think like Aura Betsy does so much work in young formats. It's crazy. Uh, Mighty wind up red wage agility yellow lead with power red. We've got a headliner helm money where your mouth is blue, a stand ground. And then we have a clash of might blue, a over the top blue. Oh, that's what we're talking about. Let's go. See, we talked about Victor enough. We got a rainbow foil, the golden sun. So that's a nice hit. Good old, good old Victor specialization. This is something that a lot of people are looking forward to. So very happy to pull a rainbow foil, the golden sun. It's a card I didn't have for my master set for heavy hitters. So very happy to put that in there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate your support. It's been Absolutely amazing being able to do podcasts like this again. If you are watching this on Monday, that means that you're a channel member. So thank you guys so much for watching this uh, on the uh, the day that it was released before everybody else. And uh, thank you for continuing to support this channel in a way that means more than you'll ever know. And I hope to continue to bring you more uh, more more channel member specific content moving forward in, in the future. Uh, but if you're watching this on Wednesday or anytime after Wednesday, Still, thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out and enjoying this. And remember, again, that if you do want to watch this earlier than everybody else, you can go ahead and become a channel member. It's, you know, we have several tiers you can join. So if it's something you guys want to go ahead and check out, you get emotes and loyalty badges and all this other fun stuff. I have a lot more community event things planned in the future. Uh, we just need to get more people involved. So if there's something you want to do, let me know in the comments. I'd love to go ahead and... Uh, you know, make a make a fun little list of things for us to do as a community. But otherwise, just make sure to like the video down below by hitting that like button. You can subscribe to the channel as well if you have not already. If you're brand new, welcome. I hope this was a fun and entertaining podcast episode for you. And again, make sure to leave a comment. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. What are you collecting? Are you excited for Collector's Week? Have you already collected everything you've wanted to collect? I'd be more than happy to hear from you guys. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate it, and I will see you all in our next episode of The Common Language. All right, everyone, nerd out. <laughs>